Hey guys, welcome back to the Kubernetes series. In the introduction of Kubernetes section, we have seen the different features of Kubernetes like monitoring, self-healing, high availability, load balancing, auto-scaling, automatic bin packing, rolling and canary deployments, automatic rollout and rollback, secret and configuration management, etc. But how Kubernetes is doing all this stuff? What are the different components involved to make this happen? That's our topic for today. In this section, we will look at the various components of Kubernetes architecture with which we are able to get all these features. So without any further delay, let's get started. When we deploy an application in a container, we need a machine to run those containers. Those missions can be virtual or physical. In the Kubernetes world, we call these missions as nodes. More specifically, worker nodes as most of the work is done by these nodes. Generally, there will be multiple worker nodes so that if one node goes down, containers can be run in other nodes. Also, we can run the same application on multiple nodes to share the load. We call these set of worker nodes as data plane. Now, there should be someone who should manage these worker nodes. Like if one node goes down, moving the containers to a healthy node, etc. This controlling part is taken care by another node called master node or control plane. In real time, there will be more than one master node for the fault tolerance. Worker nodes and master nodes together form a cluster. So a Kubernetes cluster consists of a set of worker missions called nodes that run the containerized applications and a set of master nodes which manages these worker nodes. In production environments, the control plane usually runs across multiple containers and a cluster usually runs multiple nodes providing fault tolerance and high availability. So how do master and worker nodes differ? What components does a master node have and what does a worker node have? Let us start with master node components. Master node consists of Kubernetes components that control the cluster along with the data about the cluster state and configuration. The first component is Kube API server. There should be some way for us to interact with Kubernetes cluster to use it. The API server is a component of Kubernetes control plane that exposes the Kubernetes API. We as end user can interact with these APIs directly or through CLI and SDK which again calls the same APIs. We can call this API server as the front end for the Kubernetes control plane. So with this API we can instruct Kubernetes to do some operations like scheduling pod, get the list of pods etc. If you don't know what a pod is, don't worry. For simplicity, just imagine that pod is a place where our container runs. We will discuss about pod in detail in next sessions. Next comes etcd. There should be some storage where we will track all the nodes we have in the cluster, what pods or containers we have and their state etc. etcd is a simple key value store used to store cluster data. It is recommended to have a backup plan for the etcd so that we can restore on any failures. It is only accessible from the API server for security reasons. No other component can interact directly with etcd except API server. This etcd has a wonderful feature called watch API. This watch waits for the changes to keys by continuously watching and sends those key updates back to the client. So if any change happens in the etcd records, KTS API will respond accordingly. Next component is Kube Scheduler. It helps to schedule the pods on the various nodes based on the resource utilization. For example, if our application needs 2 GB of memory and 2 CPU cores, then the pods for that application will be scheduled on a node with at least those resources. Factors taken into account for scheduling decisions include hardware and software constraints, user specifications, etc. Once the node is selected by the scheduler, it will call the API server. Next component is Kube Control Manager. When a change in a service configuration occurs, for example, replacing the image from which the pods are running or changing parameters in the configuration ML file, the controller spots the change 
and starts working towards the new desired state. There are different controllers available like replication controller, node controller, endpoint controller, etc. Replication control ensures the current number of pods are running in the cluster, whereas node controller monitors the health of each node and notifies the cluster when nodes come online or becomes unresponsive. Endpoint controller connects the pods and services to populate the endpoint object. Don't worry about pods and services for now. These controllers takes the help of the scheduler to manage pods. These all components are needed in a node to call a node as master node. Now let us look at node components. Node components run on every node maintaining running pods and providing the Kubernetes runtime environment. The first node component is container runtime. To run a container from an image, we need a container runtime. There are many container runtimes available in the market like Racket, ContainerD, Docker, etc. Docker is the most popular container runtime. I have made a detailed video on Docker. Please go through it for a better understanding of how containers work. The container runtime is a software that is responsible for running containers. The next node component is Kubelet. This is an agent that runs on each worker node in the cluster. It makes sure that the containers are running in a pod. It regularly checks the new or modified pod specification from the API server and ensuring the pods and their containers are healthy and running in the desired state. The Kubelet doesn't manage the containers that are not created by Kubernetes. It makes sure that containers are running in a pod. The Kubelet is also responsible for registering a node with a Kubernetes cluster and sending events, pod status, and resource utilization reports to the master server. The last worker node component is kubeproxy. Kubeproxy is a network proxy that runs on each worker node in your cluster, implementing part of the Kubernetes service concept. When a request is received for your application, it makes sure to forward your request to the appropriate pod. The control plane is in constant contact with your computing machines or worker nodes to make sure your cluster is running based on the configuration you have provided. And data plane takes care of running your application. So let's summarize the Kubernetes architecture with an example. Let's say we want to create two instances of an application. First, we give that configuration or spec in a document. Once the spec is ready, we send it to the API server directly or through CLI. The API then runs the spec by the scheduler. The scheduler selects the worker node to which new node should be assigned based on the configuration and resource availability. At the same time, the master server also stores the configuration and status data to HCD, which is a key value store. Once the scheduler assigns a worker node, the controller manager on the master node then sends an object spec to the node via Kubernetes API so it can create the desired object. Upon receiving the object spec, the kubelet on the node ensures the objects are created accordingly. Whenever the status of the pod is changed like pod is killed, the kubelet via API updates the HCD on master with the object status. This is the actual or current state of the pod. The watch functionality of HCD monitors the changes to the desired state and actual state. If the desired state and actual state do not match, then the control loop runs by the controller manager responds to these discrepancies and work towards the actual state of the object. For example, we wanted two pods. For any reason, if a pod goes down, the current number of pods will be 1. As number of pods we wanted is not equal to current number of pods, controller will try to make sure the current number of pods are running will be 2. Once our application is deployed, when we want to make a request to our application, QProxy takes our request and forwards our request to corresponding pods. I am sure that you got a very good understanding of how Kubernetes works by now. Stay tuned for the hands-on. My name is Pavan Tapu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.